Hi, this is Juliet. Welcome to my studio. Today I'm going to show you how to make a bead style, which I call amalgamation. It's a type of bead I've been making for quite some time. It's fairly versatile. It makes great bead sets for jewelry, but it also can be used for focal beads. And I'm going to show you a focal bead today made with a slim, extra large size lentil bead from Zuzi's Press. Okay, so now I'm going to wind down a base bead. I'm going to use clear. The reason I'm using clear is a lot of these colors, the greens and the turquoise and the gray even, can be fairly reactive. If you put them on a solid color base, by the time you melt things in and press the bead, they all can turn into reactive mush. So um, it works out better if you um, make a clear core and put the colors on that. So since I'm going to be using a lentil press, my first step is to coat the mandrel and you want to uh, fill the footprint that, that's going to be just the width of the cavity or smidge less than the cavity of your bead press. So I'm putting this first wrap on. My flame is a little bit to the right edge of where I'm working the glass and that preheats the uh, bead release so hopefully you don't get quite as many bubbles sometimes you still get them there's one in there let me uh, heat that up put it on the top so it pops and then heat the glass around it to fill it in you don't want to have bubbles against the mandrel because then cleaning the bead release out of those holes can be a, a real pain and it you know, gets little cavities and you gotta kind of drill it out with your dremel tool or however you clean the beads it's best to avoid them. All right, so I'm looking at this in my shaper here, and it's a little bit shy, so I'm going to add a little bit more length. You're better off having it a little bit too short than a little bit too long, but that was a, a whole um, rod of glass with short, so I do need to add some more. Okay, so that's about the length that I want. So now I'm going to fill this up with glass, clear glass, so it's about a little bit less than the shape of the cavity. You guys don't want to watch me do that, so I will come back in a few moments when I have a base of clear glass ready to go. Okay, so I have a bunch of clear on the mandrel here. It's roughly in the shape of a football. The width is just the right width for my bead press. And so what I'm going to do is, is uh, first test fit it and see if I've got enough glass and experience tells me that's about the right amount. I'm going to be adding a bunch of glass for the layers of the decoration so I don't need to have enough to completely fill the cavity. So what I'm going to do is heat two sides very well and leave the other side slightly cooler that way it won't ooze quite as much. And I'm going to do my first press which will get it into roughly the right shape. And that'll make it easier to decorate. And if you notice, I'm rocking the mandrel so that the flame is hitting the sides of the football kind of dead on. It's just a little more efficient at getting the heat in there. All right, so now I'm going to go over to my press. I'm doing it on the side so I'm not reaching across the torch. I like to pre-touch it. It chills it a little bit. And then go ahead and push it down. All right, you'll notice that some of the bead release broke because I'm at a twisted angle. That's pretty normal. Um, what I generally do is knock some of that off so that if there's a loose bit, it's not going to land on the bead or touch the bead. And if you'll notice, I also picked up my bead press and blew the extra bead release out because the next time I go in I don't want to have to remember to do it um, if you have the bead release there inside the press it can get a little funky and it can get stuck on your bead and ruin it and then you're picking it out and you mess up your design so it's just easier to blow the bead release out now so Part of the idea of the amalgamation beads is to have just a collection of 
stripes, dots, twisties. We can do a little bit of twisting of the glass and have it in a stripe pattern around the bead. So I'm going to start with this twisty here and I'm going to put that down because the twisties tend to be strong elements. So generally I start with one of those. So I'm going to heat the end of my twisty and usually I start on the edge and I'm going to lay it down perpendicular to my mandrel and as I'm laying it down I am twisting it and I'm going to go on the other side and I'm going to be careful to line it up so that it ends where it began right there on the edge now you notice in a few places it's a little crooked that's not a problem we can heat it up and kind of nudge it a little bit and straighten things out if there's any little baubles or divots like right there we can straighten that out a little bit using a tool such as my dental pick like this or you could use a stump shaper or razor blade knife or whatever you have handy all right, so that, that's fairly even now. Now, I don't want to superheat this because, again, I've got some of the blues and the greens together, and they can get pretty reactive. So what I like to do is heat it up a little bit and then press it down with my tool. That widens it, and it also cools it. And if you don't have it superheated, those reactions with the greens are less likely to kind of go hairy on you. If you're using other colors that don't tend to do that, it's not as big of a deal. You could, you know, melt this in or, you know, superheat it to melt it in faster. But with the turquoise, especially in that um, 212 green, I want to treat it a little gingerly. But working on the left side of the beads, I want to add a little bit of heat to the right side of the bead as well. I'm going to go to the other side and do the same thing. You'll notice as I'm pressing it, it is widening it. I'm doing it a little bit at a time, and I'm going up and down the length of it several times. You don't want to give it a super mash because then you come in with the next tool space over, and it's not going to match too well. So next I need to decide what I want to put on next. So I'm going to just take a stringer, and this is one of the blue color stringers. And again, I'm going to start at the top or the bottom, but on the edge of the bead, the thin edge of the bead. And I'm just putting a straight stringer down alongside the edge of that twisty from one end to the other. You'll notice I have my bead slightly below the flame, and the twisty is just off to the right. There's a fair amount of residual heat in this, so it doesn't take a lot to melt it in. You don't want to put the twisty directly in the flame because then it gets so hot it kind of runs away from you and it kind of gets a little uncontrollable. So right now I'm just straightening up a couple of little, little edges in there and making it look a little bit more even while I can. Okay, so I'm going to put another stripe next to that. I'll go with the dark blue, I think. If you're making a collection of these beads, the idea is to have some variety. You want to have a balance of, of which color is the predominant one for the bead. Now, if you see that stack over there, each of the beads has uh, something of a different predominant color. But overall, for a collection, they're, they're somewhat balanced. So if you're doing a focal bead as opposed to a set of beads, the thought process is a little bit different for balancing the colors. So that twisty has a kind of a dominant green background, and now I have two blue stripes next to it. I think I want to pull up something a little wider now and on the right. So I'm going to take the gray color, and I'm using a commercial stringer. I'm going to put a wider stripe down here next to those blues. Okay. So I think next, to the right of that gray, I want to put some dots, and I'm going to use this turquoise color. So I'm going to put a collection of fairly large dots running the length of the bead. They're fairly uniform, now I'm going to melt those in. Put a little bit of heat back into the other side. 
can kind of monitor the heat by looking at the color of the glass, the green glass especially, and when it starts to turn back to that um, grass green, it definitely needs more heat. Otherwise, it's a little more reddish. Now, at this point, you can take your dental tool and flatten those out and check the size of the dots. You may want to add some more glass to some of them. Take my tool, flatten those guys out. While well, you're flattening the tool, uh, flattening the dots, you can also scooch them a little bit to get their placement a little more balanced if you need to. Okay, those are fairly well balanced now. I think I'm going to put a contrasting dot on top of them. Um, let's see what color do I want to do. I think I'll pick up the gray with a dot on top of them and then I'm going to go a little bit more green next to the right so I will put a small gray dot on each of these. So now I'm going to take my green stringer to melt those guys in a bit. And I'm going to put a thin stripe. I'm going to put two thin stripes side by side just to the right of that row of dots. The stringer broke there. So if your stringer breaks, you can go back in above it, go over it, and just kind of pull past it. And if you need to, you can use your stringer as a tool and kind of thin it out and pull a dot if you get a dot that is too fat. Or you can pull it over a spot that may be too thin. So you can kind of fudge it and clean that up a little bit. All right, so that blue over there is fairly strong. So I think I need to bring a little bit more blue on the left. So maybe what I'll do is I'll put another stripe of this blue just on the other side of this twisty, the greenish twisty. hand shook a little bit there and I got a bit of an ick in my line. Let me see if I can straighten that out some more. And I think I want to bring in some of that turquoise color and I'm going to do it via a twisty. So this one here is predominantly a turquoise color. So Again, I'm going to start on the edge, and as I'm laying it down, I'm going to continue to twist it. This one doesn't have both the green and the turquoise together, so it's a little less reactive than that first one. But still, I want to push it down carefully. You want to be careful when you're pressing it that you're not going to distort the twisty lines. Now, on the right side, <clears throat> I think what I want to do is melt this in a bit and add some twists using a um, tool or a stringer. So I'm trying to get these turquoise and gray dots melted in on both sides. So I'm giving one side heat, and while that's kind of soaking in, go to the other side. Let the dots melt in more or less on their own. This is a big bead, and the miner doesn't have a whole lot of radiant heat. It has some, but I want to forget that left half of the bead because I'm busy doing details all the way over on the right half. All right, so I can see those are flowing in nicely and heating up. Okay, so when we twist, I only want to have the surface hot, so... I'll let that right side cool a bit and I'll put some extra heat here on the left. And so I'm going to decide where I want to twist. I've got this blue and I'm going to cut that little crooked edge off here. So I have a straight edge here on the end without a crooked blob. And what I'm going to do is heat up and twist. I'm going to go right in that triangle between the two green dots and this, this uh, the two turquoise dots and this purple here, and and do a truet twist. And I'm going to, for this one, I'm going to twist them all in the same direction, which will be clockwise. 
I get a bit more insurance heat in the left. Pick the first two dots in the green heat. I only want the top millimeter of glass. Soft, touch down in that gap and twist a little bit and then melt it off. Okay, put a little bit of heat in the left. And now I'm gonna go to the opposite side. So I'm gonna go to the back side of the bead and go into that same spot. And flame cut it off. And I'm deliberately leaving a bit of a blue dot behind. So I'm gonna go, let's see, I'm gonna skip every other one just for now because I don't wanna superheat it too much. So I'm gonna go down to these three here. I'm not doing a whole lot of twisting. I'm looking at the prior ones that I twisted and trying to be a little uniform and match that. Now I could decide to leave it as it is, or I could twist the ones in the middle. Or I could do twist the opposite side on the left, which is what I think I'm going to do. So I'll go in here, here, and the edge, here, here, and the edge. So let me do that. I think that'll look cool. Down, twist, and flame cut. So this is a fairly large bead, and it holds a lot of heat. So the heat control isn't as big of an issue. I can spend a little more time on one side because there's a fair mass of glass. If you're working on smaller pressed beads, you have to be a little bit more careful to keep the whole thing warm and not let one end get totally neglected. So I like the way those details look, but I need some sort of a curly cue or a round something added to the left side to balance it out. So I'm thinking what I'm going to do is take that turquoise color, that middle turquoise color, and add a row of dots on top of my dark blue stripe down here that's in between those two twisties. So I'm going to melt that in a little bit more. And what I might do is actually take one half of the bead and just touch it down in my press to uh, flatten out those twisties a little bit. So let me get it hot here. Clean the bead release off of that. There we go. Let me get these two cords of twisties hot and I'm actually gonna just set it down in the press here. I'm not pressing it, I'm just using that to help push them into shape. Put that back, let me get back my twisty and I was gonna add some dots. I don't want them to be as big as the dots I started with, so I think I'll just go with some smaller dots right on top of the blue. As I'm doing this, what I'm doing is I'm preheating the twisty and getting a little gather. They're all about the same size, and that helps give me some uniformity. So you find the location, and you hold it at that heating location for a certain amount of time, and it gives you about the same size dot. So you kind of get a, a rhythm going and that helps you with some uniformity. So I think my right left color is fairly well balanced. Got that really strong stripe down the center which looks a little off and I need to put something on the far left. I think on the far left I need a lighter color. So let me get this green stringer here. When you're doing this last bit up near the mandrel, it can be a little tricky to get in there. So what I often do is melt it and press it down, you know, outwards away from the bead hole using my tool to help make sure it gets set in there. Let me add some more heat and melt these other things in a bit and look at it again. Maybe what I want to do is just some little rake details. I'm thinking maybe I'll drag this dark blue up into the gray and, and rake it towards the right. I may need a little bit more glass there, so what I'm going to do is take this dark blue and just add another layer right on top of the prior one. 
That'll give me a little bit more glass to work with on my raking. I do want to get that new blue stringer I put down completely fused with the one below it so I'm not just like raking it off the top. Okay, so here we're going to go. So I'm going to start on the mandrel, right on top of the mandrel, and just rake to the right. That's enough. And I'll do the other side. Dots, it wasn't twists, it wasn't another twisty. I just gave it a little bit more visual interest because those vertical lines were just a bit too strong there. Okay, so I think what we're ready for now is a final heat and a press. Okay, so I've spent the last few minutes um, putting a good amount of heat in this bead. Uh, softening everything so that the surface is more or less flat and flush. And I have a fairly well even heat in the whole bead. All right, everything is glowing fairly red. All right, touch one edge, touch the other edge, put it down. All right, that's better. There we go. Now it comes out with a crisp lentil shape. So now we want to flame polish the chill marks. So you want to just touch the surface normal to the surface and not do anything on the edges yet. This will help take the chill marks out of it. Let that cool a bit before we go in and do the same on the other side. All right. Now, I like to do an extra touch of heat around the bead holes. So that helps make a nice pucker around both bead holes. And then a bit of insurance heat, especially along the mandrel. Sometimes you may want to do just one light kiss of flame along the edge of the lentil. And do take a good look for chill marks because this size bead when you make it into a pendant you know you tend to fondle it and run your hands and your thumb over it. And if there are chill marks in there you're gonna feel them. I have some really cool looking pendants that I didn't take the chill marks out all the way. I'm like darn I should have done that better. So there we go. Ready to go into the kiln. Thanks for watching watching the video I hope you enjoyed learning how to make amalgamation beads here's a number of other color palettes that I've been experimenting with um, this set here with the blues and greens were inspired by a set of Louboutin shoes the shades of pinks with greens were inspired by a photo of azaleas growing in my garden in the springtime and this last set here was inspired by a really cool uh, ball of sock yarn in great shades of tan and blues. So there's inspiration all around you. You can use that for a color palette and just be sure to experiment a little bit first and have fun. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like our channel.